Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop text tutorial, I'll show you how to make a carved wood effect looking as if you have your lettering made out of a nice shiny wood. Fairly straightforward, only requiring two things as you can see in here. We have our layer and our texture layer and our wood text. And there's a slight gradient in behind. Alright, let's go ahead and start this one. File, New. Leave this at my standard settings in there. Which is 2100 by 1500 with 300 DPI. You may want to use different settings for that. I found that, that works out very well for me for most cases. I can then you know downsize as I need to for other uses. Let's put a gradient in here and I want the default which is foreground and background color and I have mine at the default settings black to white. If you hold the shift key down it'll give you a perfectly vertical line. Let me just do that opposite direction here. There we go. Maybe a little bit higher up. Trying to find just the right effect. Oh, I see the problem. I'm on the wrong gradient. Switch over here to the default gradient. And that's more what I'm looking for. I'll start in here and go up there. That's pretty good. Maybe a little higher up. That works out well. There's a nice soft gradient in there. Now, if it's too bright up here, you can tone that down by going for a gray instead of a white. Let's change our background color, just bring that down a little bit. And do the same thing. Foreground to background, hold the shift key down. And I'll start from the middle someplace. That's pretty good. So it's not too bright at the top because it's just something in the background. We now want our text layer. And let's just give this a nice easy to see color. I'll just pull up here upper left hand corner. Gives me white text. And let's just type in wood. The typeface I'm using on this is Poplar Standard. If you don't happen to have that, just do a search online, search on Google for Poplar font and you'll find tons of download sites for that typeface or others that are similar to it as well. I like it just because it's kind of thick flat lettering which makes it easy to see textures inside of that letter. Let's resize this, edit, transform scale, scale that up and reposition. Something around in there is pretty good. And we'll apply that. So there's the basic setting. We now can put a fill into this. We'll come back and do some bevel and emboss stuff on this in just a minute. But let's put that fill texture in here. So we need to make a texture. So I'll click on a, the new layer button. There we are. Let's set these back to their default settings, black and white. And go up here to filter render and fibers. Oh, I forgot I need to fill this with something. It doesn't matter what you fill it with. I'll fill it with black. As long as there's some content in there, that's all you have to have. Filter, render, fibers. And we then can come in here and find some nice wood looking fibers. Now you can play around with this. You randomize your texture like that and take something which is close to what you want and then add in variance. More variance because it makes everything harder and sharper. Less makes things a little bit softer. I think something you know, a little on the softer side works out well for wood. More strength you get more lines in there. Less strength you get fewer lines. Go too far down almost begins looking like a rocky surface. So just a little bit of that. Something in there. Just kind of a nice, a nice soft. We still see some graining effect on that. I think that's pretty good. Choose OK. And that just fills that with that grainy effect. 
Now I want to have my fibers at an angle in here. So let's go up to Edit, Transform, Rotate. And I'll just give that a little bit of a spin. Just like that, that's enough. And then Edit, Transform, Scale. And I'll pull that out so it fills the whole area of my picture. There we go. Notice as you do that, the actual quality of the image changes as well. So you may want to choose something to accentuate the wood grain effect on those two sides. But that's about right. That's pretty good. I'll just click on the check mark up here to set that in place. We now need to give this a wood tone coloration. You do that with the image menu, adjustments, hue saturation, and colorize right down there. It makes it a black and white or a colorized monochromatic image. If you bring the lightness down, it begins to put color into the white. If the lightness is up, your whites stand out and then it begins to lighten up the dark areas. They go, they fade. At a midpoint, you have some white and some darks kind of a mix. And as you go to the left on the lightness, it brings in color into the light areas. And that's what we want. We want to have color in the light areas. For brighter wood, just bring your saturation up a bit. For duller wood, you can take it down. So you can you know, kind of find the right tone that you want in here. And then just a slight movement here, you can adjust the hue of that wood. You, know, you can see how it changes that color. But right down, wait, right down towards the end here, you can use that to adjust those values and the saturation. Get just the wood effect that you want. Okay, that looks like wood to me. Choose OK. We now need to take this and put this inside of our lettering. Luckily, that's easy to do. That's just turning this into a clipping mask. We're actually using the text as a clipping mask. For a clipping mask, you want to have your text beneath and then your image on top that you're going to be filling into your text. So image on top, make sure you're clicked on that top layer and then go up to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. There we go. It just drops that into that layer and it looks like it actually is wood. So far so good. We now just need to come in and give this a little bit of bevel and emboss to really accentuate that make it a, a three-dimensional kind of value on this one. So we'll come down to our wood layer and we'll be going, going for our layer styles, either the FX button down here or layer menu and layer style right there, bevel and emboss. There we go. You want inner bevel, chisel hard, and we can then adjust the size like that until I have a nice looking edge. Looks like it actually has been you know, carved or routed out of wood. You don't want any softening. Softening just kind of softens things down. You want that hard edge. That's going to make it look better. You can choose you know, how much depth you want on that. I, I kind of like it in here somewhere, so it's a pretty good thick edge, but still a lot of face showing. So far so good. We can increase the contrast here with the depth control. We'll come back to that in just a second if we need to. But now we want to change the shading. The depth and the shading here is controlled by the shading area down here and by the contour. And you want a specific contour, and that's that one right there. It's called ring. And for me, this is kind of the magic contour. Click on that, and all of a sudden, things just look dramatic. It's a great little contour button. You can see how, how fast it did that. There's the, the regular, and here's with that ring. Other options in here. I'm just going to click through a few of these. You see, just you get different effects on these different contours, and they'll give you different qualities. So there's the ring. You have even strange things like that ring double. And depending upon what you're trying to look at, this looks a lot more like a softer kind of a wood. This is a shinier kind of a wood. You can change the lighting direction in here if you want to. So there's a lot of options down here. And then up here on depth, we can control that lighting. Go, go too far in the depth to see what happens. It gets real dark. If I go to the left, it gets real soft. But if I move it back and forth, you can see what's actually happening in here is it's moving the light source. The depth is really kind of moving the light source. You want to find a spot where you, you have a, 
a nice contour showing, but you still can see that edge in there. So and that looks pretty good. And I think we're just about there. Choose OK. And there we go. Kind of a nice polished wood look or carved out of wood. And again, very, very easy and straightforward on doing this. Now, if you want to go further on this one, you can. You can change the quality of the wood tone, for instance. You can also change the typeface. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But for the basic look, there it is. That's how you do it. And it's just your you know, create your, your wood texture or even find a wood texture picture and use that. Use a fairly fat type face, works out better. And then a simple bevel and emboss. It's an inner bevel, chisel hard, and with that ring gloss contour to really give it that shiny effect. Okay, so that's your basic wood setup. Let's now take a look at just some variations on this, what you can do for variations. Let's first change the typeface. I'm going to go here and we'll change our typeface. Notice it's still regular type. I can still edit this completely. I'm going to change this to a kind of medium thin typeface like that and you'll see we lose a lot of that effect of it being in wood with the thinner typeface. And part of that is that the brain thinks that wood is soft so carved wood needs to be thicker to survive. A thinner typeface like this will work fine with a more metallic texture but it doesn't work as well for something which your mind tells you should be a soft texture so you really want to have something that's a little fatter or thicker. This is a real kind of crazy one but this actually works as you can see there. It looks like it's carved out of wood even though it's too large. It's kind of an old fashioned look. That still works. It may need a little bit of adjustment though of course to make everything work out just fine. You know, Just change your settings in here a bit to match the typeface. Here's a show card gothic. That works out very well as well. I'm just going to bring the size down a little bit here. Edit, transform, scale, and let's bring that back down again. Notice also because we're using a clipping mask that the texture doesn't move with the letters. The texture is put into the letters wherever the letters happen to end up at. But you can see the same effect here. For this to work out well, you really want to have fat lettering with large front surfaces on that. And that's what will give you that effect of it being carved out of wood. All right, let's take a look at the quality up here of our texture that we're clipping into or inlaying into our wood. You can change this at any time by going back up to Image, Adjustments, and Hue Saturation. And I can now change the color in here. So I can, actually, you know, I can choose different kinds of wood or even different textures. It's almost a metallic-y kind of a look in there. Or real you know, kind of sci-fi things. If you push your lightness way up, you can get real bright colors. So the technique can be used for some special effects as well. It doesn't have to be left just as wood. You can go real wild on this. Just keep in mind the, the basic settings on, on this that you know, bringing your saturation down a bit, a little more soft, gives you more of a naturalistic look. A little further to the right hand side is more of a cartoony look. And the darker gives you more color inside your, your faces and lighter you tend to lose that color. So there we go. I'm just cancel that out. And that's a look then at how to create a wood look. Your lettering made out of wood. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.